welcome to the new look of CNN News 18. It's a brighter, bolder, bigger than ever before. It's time to bring sense and clarity back to television news and that's exactly what we'll be getting you right here on CNN News 18. Good morning, I'm Vandana Sebastian Bava. Let's take you to our top story this hour. Delhi's air quality is in the very poor category today as the overall air quality index was recorded at 338. According to Safar uh, forecast, uh, the uh, PM10 pollutants in Delhi were recorded at 304, which comes under the poor category, and PM2.5 pollutants were recorded at 169, which comes under the very poor category. The Air Monitoring Agency, however, has uh, predicted an improvement in air quality in the coming week. Well, bringing in my colleague Prashasti, who joins us live from uh, the Akshardham area in the national capital. Um, uh, Prashasti, take us through the reasons why Safar has predicted an improvement in air quality over the next couple of days. Well, definitely, definitely, Vandana. First of all, the air quality has improved marginally, though, though it's very temporary and the AQI might worsen further because of low wind speed. But yes, favorable meteorological conditions has been among the factors which has improved the air quality index, but that improvement has been very marginal. The current overall air quality index uh, in the capital is 353, inching close to the severe category again in the later half of the very poor category. But then yes, there has been a significant improvement since Friday when the AQI plunged towards the severe category hovering around 366. Well, yes, because of the wind speeds of up to 8 to 12 kilometers per hour, the pollutants have been dispersed. But that dispersion has been very minute. However, still there is a thin layer of uh, smog and haze here at Akshadham 2. Vandana, I'm showing you. This is the Akshadham temple here. And we are currently at the flyover, but still that smog is persistent here. And uh, the conditions might worsen in the coming days as well. Well, having said that, I've got some cyclists with me today. And let I'll quickly take you across to those cyclists and I'll ask them that are they facing any breathing difficulties? So you've been cycling all along the capital. Are you facing any problems because of the escalating pollution levels? See, uh, it's basically filthy air. I know we can call it that level because AQI is so high. We the cyclists are exposed to the air, and we can feel the difference because we are all day every day out out here. But we, when we go towards Noida, I still feel it is slightly better than what Delhi is. I don't know somehow Delhi needs to work on something very seriously. Otherwise, we all not, won't be able to come out only of the other houses. You know? So, Vandana, the cyclists here are saying that, of course, they are facing that prop, the difficulties they are facing that already they are being exposed to the hazardous levels of pollution and they are facing the contrast, that contrast is visible as the AQI is worsening day by day. Well, definitely 30 million people across the capital are now dependent on the mercy of favorable meteorological conditions. Having said that, a number of agencies are converging their energies to bring down the pollution levels, but they continue to rise nevertheless. However, that respite is temporary and the AQI may worsen further in the coming days as the wind speed which uh, rose to 8 to 12 km per hour might again come down, uh, escalating the pollution levels once again in the Delhi NCR region. Mandir. Right. Any additional measures, Precious, they expect? by the Delhi government over the next couple of days for instance are they expected to bring back their odd even scheme that they have resorted to in the past when pollution levels have surged well definitely having said that Delhi government definitely is trying to contain the pollution levels there have been a number of uh, uh, steps and initiatives that have been taken up by the government ahead of the winter season and now to government came up with a number of campaigns well the mega campaign youth production ke virod and under that there are a number of campaigns too and the recent campaign that was launched by the delhi government urging people to uh, shut down the engines at the crossings and we are seeing that the government is playing very hard on that campaign urging the people consistently to switch off the engines to cut down the vehicular emissions but well coming back to the car rationing scheme and odd and even well, according to the graded response action plan, Vanna, if the air quality index worsens to severe category for consistently 48 hours, if we witness the AQI plunging to the severe category for 48 hours straight, well, definitely there will be a number of measures that will automatically come into force uh, under the graded response action plan that definitely include the odd even car rational scheme, the banning of construction activities, shutting down of thermal power plants, shutting down of brick kilns. So these are the measures that will take up, uh, take up in, that will be taken up if the AQI remains in the severe category nevertheless. 
But yes, since we are witnessing the AQI is coming close to the severe category, it's currently 353 in the later half of the very poor category. So if in the coming days, because of low wind speeds, because of unfavorable meteorological conditions, and of course because of local emissions, if we witness the AQI rising uh, to hazardous levels, well, definitely we can expect the uh, car rationing scheme will be implemented by the Delhi government, which has been by far one of the innovations of the government to cut down the pollution levels. But given the COVID appropriate measures, it might be difficult to augment the public transport vanna because uh, definitely when you uh, launch a scheme as serious as car rationing system well the people the regular office goers might face a number of problems in such a scenario the public transport must be augmented but given the covid times given the protocols of social distancing it might be difficult to augment the public transport because social distancing protocols need to be followed in the public transport as well so right. yes, it might be difficult for the government to implement the car rationing scheme definitely, but nevertheless if the condition deteriorates to that level then the government definitely will come up to that level of uh, containing the pollution levels. Alright uh, Prashasti, thank you for bringing us up to speed with the leaders. Cutting across now to some breaking news now. Well, these are details of uh, the corona count in the country. Active cases now under 6.7 lakhs. There's also been a big dip in the number of deaths in the last 24 hours. Recovery rate is at 90% today. Well, those are the details we have. The latest COVID figures released by the Ministry of Health. Going across to Sneha for more details. Sneha, what else can you tell us about uh, the numbers mm -hmm. coming in right now? Yes, Vandana, area of concern continues to be Kerala, recording more than uh, more cases than Maharashtra, in fact, in the second day in a row. Uh, you know, uh, those who are at the helm of affairs in Kerala, the authorities, the government there, have acknowledged the fact that there has been a post-festive spike uh, after Onam, and that continues to be an area of concern. So that's the story from Kerala. Yes, more cases than Maharashtra. Delhi, again, reporting high number of cases at 4,000. Uh, the government would there, there would of course be, uh, of the argument would be saying that the number of uh, tests have gone up also. So it's the natural outcome of that. Ideally, should be the situation that the testing is going up and the cases are coming down. But that doesn't seem to be the case in Delhi, where the testing has gone up and the cases have in fact increased also. Uh, nationally, the picture looks uh, as the positivity ratio is concerned. We are at 4.3 percent. That's the uh, 24-hour positivity rate, uh, which is, of course, heartening given the fact that the World Health Organization has said that it should be consistently below the 5% mark. That's not the case in India just yet. If you look at the 14-day cumulative period, it continues to hover around 6%, uh, but less than 5% is what the WHO has said for us to then uh, take assurance and say that the curve indeed is flattening. Uh, the, recover, the recovery percentage, again, today at 90%, <clears throat> which, of course, if you look at the global picture, uh, gives us a reason to be reassured again, given the fact that the, glo that the global percentage of the recovery rate is somewhere around 73%. Also, West Bengal continues to be an area of concern. Now, the next few days, as we know, is going to be extremely crucial because it's for all of us to see how post-festive uh, surges both in Maharashtra after Ganesh Chaturthi and in Kerala after Onam has given rise to concerns that people are not following uh, COVID appropriate behavior. Uh, the concern is that the repercussions of this is going to be felt weeks and months after, long after the festivities are over. So it remains to be seen if the mathematical modeling, the calculation of just about less than 40,000 active cases was true for India in the month of February. Uh, if COVID-appropriate behavior is followed, then perhaps we would be inching towards that. However, the other good news is that our uh, active cases, again, uh, continues to be well below the 7 lakh mark. And I think this is for the third day in a row that we are below the 7 lakh mark as far as the active cases are concerned. All right. Um, uh, Sneha, thank you for putting those numbers into perspective for us. Now, meanwhile, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat gave his customary Vijay Dashmi address earlier. Speaking at the event, Bhagwat said that India must remain prepared to tackle China and show that it will not bow down to the enemy. He said that the relationship with friendly neighbors like Nepal should be resolved at the earliest. He also raised the anti-CA riots, which created tension earlier in many parts of the country. 
uh, accusing the anti-CA lobby for misguiding people, Bhagwat said that the act is not meant to target any religious community. The RSS chief also reiterated the government's stand that no citizen of this country needs to be worried under the BJP government. अपने पड़ोसी देशों में दो तीन देश ऐसे हैं जहां पर सांप्रदायिक कारणों से उस देश के निवासियों को प्रताड़ित किया जाने का इतिहास है और उन लोगों को जाने के लिए दूसरी जगह नहीं वो भारत में आते हैं तो वहां से विस्थापित पीड़ित होकर आते हैं यहां पर वो जल्दी बच जाए ठीक से बच जाए इसलिए उस अधिनियम में कुछ संशोधन करने का वो प्रावधान था जो भारत के नागरिक है उनके लिए उसमें कुछ खतरा नहीं था well, we have my colleague Sumit Pandey and Maria Shakil joining us uh, live for more details. Uh, coming to you first, Maria, uh, from uh, the issue with China to Article 370, uh, Ram Mandir to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, the RSS chief touched upon pretty much every pertinent topic uh, over the last year. Yes, that's right. And uh, that has been really the uh, you know, the theme of his, uh, this traditional Vijay Dashmi speech, which gives the direction of the thought in the socio-political landscape, also the economic direction, as far as the RSS cadres are concerned, and there is a lot of anticipation that is associated with this speech. Of course, he did, did remind that, uh, that the anti-CA protest that happened in the later part of last year, around the same time last year, and then we also saw, uh, you know, post that, there was, uh, you know, in, in the month of winters, there were, uh, there was there was a lot of tension that had taken place and there was a lot of um, uh, misgivings that was associated with this legislation. That's what he had tried to highlight on this. And also at the same time, um, I think his point uh, of view related to how India has fought coronavirus so effectively, um, but it, the war is still not over, it's a long road ahead, and that there are several challenges that have to be tackled with. But I think what he, the message to China is, again, um, on expected lines when he said that uh, India should not be seen as a weak nation, that the expansionist China should understand that it's India's ability to defend its terrain, that India believes in uh, the territorial integrity, but doesn't believe in expanding its footprints, and hence uh, the neighbor should be should beware of it. Right, stay on with us, Maria, going across to Sumit. Uh, Sumit, uh, staying with the focus on the Citizenship Amendment Act that uh, the RSS chief highlighted, he went on to ask what is wrong with it because he said that it's only uh, citizens of India do not need to worry and it's only those who are coming from outside uh, who will be subject to the act. Well, yes, uh, uh, his reiteration on uh, the CA, uh, especially the anti-CA stir, and uh, if one were to quote him saying that the opportunist unleashed organized violence in the name of anti-CA stir, coming as it does uh, uh, with uh, the heat once again rising on the issue of Kashmir, Farooq Abdullah, Mehbooba Mufti taking a stand. And we've also seen uh, some of the BJP leaders raising this issue in the Bihar polls. Uh, that's quite interesting if one were to look at it politically uh, in the midst of, of uh, you know, the elections in Bihar. Uh, a section of the BGP trying to raise this issue and Bhagwat taking a very, very strident position and line on the anti-CA stir, calling them the opportunists. He touched upon a host of issues uh, in this address as uh, the RSS Sar Sanchalak uh, are wont to do uh, during the Dashera or the uh, Vijay Dashmi address. Uh, that also, one other the interesting point with the context of Bihar is when he spoke, when he alluded to, he just tangentially touched upon the issue of prohibition, when he was speaking about uh, the production of sugar, the agriculture, whether alcohol production is a byproduct, whether that should be encouraged or not. And then he just, you know, touched upon it saying that, you know, there is again a talk of, uh, you know, ending prohibition in some states, which some opposition parties in Bihar are already promising. So yes, uh, a host and the gamut of issues, but uh, uh, the current uh, socio-economic political condition of this country in mind I think he's very clearly spelled out the RSS position and also sent across a message to the RSS cadre as they prepare for polls in Bihar. All right, uh, Sumit and Maria, we leave it there. Cutting across now to Sikkim, where, um, uh, where in fact Rajnath Singh is speaking after performing the Shastri Puja. Listen. 
यू में से डोंग और चुंग थांग लाशेन जीमा मुगु थांग नाकुला तक 225 किलोमीटर डबल लेन सड़क का निर्माण कार्य नियोजित है ये कार्य नौ पैकेजों में नियोजित किए गए हैं जिनकी अनुमानित लागत लगभग 5,710 करोड़ रुपए की है पैकेज वन की स्वीकृति शीघ्र ही होने वाली है शेष पैकेज में डीपीआर प्रोग्रेस में है इस प्रोजेक्ट में आधुनिक तकनीक से बनी सड़कों से नॉर्थ सिक्किम के दूर दराज के इलाके जोड़े जा सकेंगे इससे न केवल स्थानीय सामाजिक एवं आर्थिक विकास को बढ़ावा मिलेगा बल्कि सैन्य तत्परता भी पहले की अपेक्षा बेहतर होगी साथियों माननीय प्रधानमंत्री के दिशा निर्देश में पूर्वोत्तर राज्यों में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर निर्माण में लगातार बढ़ोतरी हो रही है और बार्डर रोड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने इसमें बहुत ही उल्लेखनीय कार्य किया है इसके लिए मैं डायरेक्टर जनरल श्री हरपाल सिंह और उनके सारे साथियों को विशेष रूप से हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं बी के पास पूर्वोत्तर क्षेत्र में कुल 8,090 किलोमीटर लंबाई की सड़कें हैं इनमें से पांच किलोमीटर निर्माण योजना में है इनमें से महत्वपूर्ण 30 में से 20 आईसीबीआर यानी इंडो चाइना बॉर्डर रोड्स का निर्माण हो चुका है और शेष पर अभी कार्य जारी है इसके अतिरिक्त भी 12 अन्य आईसीबीआर का का कार्य सौंपा गया है जिनकी कुल लंबाई 338 किलोमीटर और लागत 3097 करोड़ की है साथियों हमारी सरकार का शुरू से ही देश के सीमावर्ती क्षेत्रों में सड़क पुल तुरंग एवं इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के निर्माण पर ध्यान केंद्रित रहा है सड़कें किसी भी राष्ट्र के सामाजिक आर्थिक विकास में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाती हैं कुछ समय तक पहले तक हमारे यहां एक विषम धारणा थी कि सीमावर्ती क्षेत्रों में सड़कों का विकास हमारे हित में नहीं है समझा जाता था कि सीमा की सड़कें विपरीत परिस्थितियों में हमारा ही नुकसान कर सकती हैं हमने इस धारणा को तोड़ा है और सीमावर्ती क्षेत्रों में विकास की नई राहें खुली हैं मैं इसी मार्ग यानी एन एच का ही उदाहरण देना चाहूंगा अपनी शुरुआत यानी 2009 से 2018 तक इसका काम आधा भी पूरा नहीं हो पाया था और पिछले महज दो साल में इसका आधे से अधिक काम पूरा किया गया है यह हमारी सरकार की सीमाई विकास की प्रतिबद्धता को दर्शाता है सरकार का पूरा प्रयास है कि सड़कों पुलों और सुरंगों के निर्माण एवं रख रखाव के माध्यम से नागरिकों और सेना की सामरिक आवश्यकताओं की पूर्ति अवाध गति से यह चलती रहे साथियों माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी नियमित रूप से इन परियोजनाओं की प्रगति की निगरानी कर रहे हैं और हर समय फंड फ्लो सुनिश्चित किया जा रहा है संगठन का वार्षिक बजट जो कि आज से पांच छह वर्ष पहले तक तीन से चार हजार करोड़ के बीच हुआ करता था अब वह ग्यारह हजार करोड़ रुपये तक पहुंच चुका है इसके चलते बॉर्डर रोड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नई तकनीकों को अपनाकर अपने कौशल को उन्नत करने और आधुनिकीकरण की दिशा में लगातार आगे बढ़ रहा है इस अवसर पर मैं सिक्किम राज्य सरकार के योगदान की भी सराहना करना चाहता हूं और विशेष रूप से वहां के माननीय मुख्यमंत्री श्री प्रेम सिंह जी तमांग और उनके नेतृत्व की सरकार को की भी मैं सराहना करता हूं राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री उनके मंत्रिमंडल अधिकारियों का योगदान मैं कहना चाहूंगा कि सचमुच प्रशंसनीय है बॉर्डर रोड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को सड़क निर्माण के लिए शीघ्र भूमि अधिग्रहण वन विभाग से मंजूरी और पत्थर खदान की स्थापना स्थापना में आप लोगों का विशेष सहयोग मिला है आप लोगों की सक्रियता के कारण कोविड 19 के दौरान भी सड़क निर्माण में लगने वाली सामग्री एवं श्रमिकों के आवागमन में बहुत ही सहायता मिली है इसी के साथ राज्य सरकार ने श्रमिकों के कल्याण के लिए समय समय पर उन्हें कंबल 
रेनकोट और गर्म कपड़े देकर उनके हौसले को उत्साहित किया है मैं सिक्किम के लोगों का भी परियोजना में सहयोग के लिए तहे दिल स्वागत करता हूं मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि आपकी मेहनत और योगदान से पूरे राज्य का सामाजिक और आर्थिक विकास निरंतर होता रहेगा मैं आने वाले वर्षों में नई चुनौतियों को लेने के लिए एवं सिक्किम के लोगों को समय पर काम कम लागत में सुरक्षित सड़कें पुल व सुरंग को प्रदान करने के लिए आपको हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं देता हूं एक बार अंत में मैं फिर बॉर्डर रोड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्थानीय जनता सिक्किम की उसको हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं और विजयदशमी और दीपावली की भी आपको भी तथा आपके सभी परिवार के सदस्यों को भी अपनी हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं देते हुए अपना निवेदन समाप्त करता हूं आप सबको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Well, going across to Shreya for more details. Shreya, Rajnath Singh once again giving a strong message to China. It's correct, and it was expected given that he is at the border with China. In fact, uh, you know, we'll also see. We've already seen some pictures of a Shastra Puja that has been conducted. Remember, Shastra Puja is conducted on the day of the Shera to worship the. tools the arms of the goddess and that is what rajnath singh is doing today what he said in sukhna today is this he's saying look uh, talks are currently going on he he didn't sound very optimistic about the talks if you listen to the entire sound bite that he's given to ani he doesn't sound very optimistic about the talks but he's saying that our soldiers are standing guard and they will not cede one inch to the enemy he's also saying when history is written it will record the valor of our indian soldiers so yes his trip today is is you know not it's not just a token trip where you're going to Uh, meet soldiers who are deployed at the LSE to spend a festival with them it's also a larger strategic message that is being sent to china but having said that you know for a soldier who is posted at nathola or siachen or deep in the heart of a desert it's always good to know uh, that the raksha mantri of your country the man who is your boss the man who is taking all decisions he is the one who has left his family behind in delhi traveled all the way to spend a festival with you to speak to you to have a meal with you to ask about your family that becomes a huge morale booster and this is coming at a time as i said when the india china conflict has entered its sixth month and we all know and there is a clear uh, realization within the indian security establishment that our soldiers will be spending this winter at the icy heights of eastern ladakh and this possibly is the new normal so even when winter melts into spring and enters into summer this is the situation that will remain on the ground where your lac will have to be guarded through the year like your loc so this is a raksha mantri who is on the ground i think preparing his troops for that reality that has now set in right also personal touch there with the raksha mantri choosing to spend uh, vijayadashmi with uh, the troops on the ground thank you shreya for joining us with those details on that note it's a wrap on the show thank you for watching but uh, remember the amazon great indian uh, festival is live now with um, in fact um, hot deals in place uh, in fact take a look at what all is in store Amazon